So I have a Radio Shack Super Radio Killer. It's definitely seen better days. This one is a model 12-650. Uh, it had a sticker over the 650A. So obviously it had an A and a B. And a customer brought this in the other day and he's telling me that uh, he only uses it on batteries. Let's see, he's got some batteries in there, kind of mixed and matched. And he says it stopped working on batteries. And uh, it's obviously got an AC-DC switch. So uh, let's see what we can find out. Uh, somebody was asking me what happened to the yellow case on my Fluke. Uh, here it is. I've actually got three of these now. I've got uh, a couple of 117s and a 115. So I've got it on uh, volts. I'm in the right connector. I'm not in amps. Always make sure you check that. And I'm just going to poke in between the batteries here. and See if I see anything. 1.5, 1.5. 1.5 so those are all good let's uh, pop those out and look at the lower level let's see that's the loop around side so well we'll go with these two we should have about three volts and we do now uh, connection looks pretty good in there it's got a little bit of crud on there. Take a little uh, wire brush and try to clean that off. That might be might be the whole problem right there. Yeah, so I've got my uh, Harbor Freight uh, grinder here, my little Dremel knockoff. It's definitely seen better days. <laughs> so I'm just going to reach in here. No, it's definitely a lot better than it was. Let's see if it'll focus down in there. There we go. Oh yeah, definitely better. Well, let's go ahead and load some batteries back up into it and see if we made any progress. We've got competitions of Energizers and Duracells in here fighting each other. I don't know why Radio Shock opted to put an AC-DC switch in their radio. When in the GE, it's automatic switching. Oh, I think that was it. Just had to clean the battery contacts. Should we pull it apart just to see what's inside? I think so. Maybe we can clean the pots and the switches and make it last a few more years for them. Uh, getting back to the... Don't know why they uh, put an AC-DC switch in this one when in the GE radio they did not. In the GE radio, they just isolate the batteries with a single diode so that if you're plugged into the power supply, into the AC, the voltage uh, from power transformer after re rectification is higher than the uh, battery voltage. So the, uh, the blocking diode is not biased on at that point, so it doesn't use any of the batteries. And then if the battery voltage drops, or if the AC voltage drops, to a point below the battery voltage. Yeah, probably won't let it get in there. Oh yeah. If the AC voltage drops to a point lower than the battery voltage, then the diode biases on and it runs off the batteries. So it looks like there's only three screws total holding this baby together. Let's see if they'll no, they don't want to walk out. It's obviously been apart before I see some pry marks here. Okay, well I've got the knobs off. Wow, it's even got these little pads to keep the uh, dust ingress out. Let's see if it did a good job or not. Well, the first thing I see is a very small tuning capacitor. Let's see if I can get it on camera. I do see a pretty good size ferrite rod antenna for the AM. And it does look like they're using some higher quality components down in here for the uh, tuning and coils and whatnot. Uh, it doesn't look too terribly bad. I have to check the sensitivity of it. It's kind of strange that they opted to have the uh, switches not be attached to the main board, but have them way out here. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and clean those switches. They're really hard to operate. Maybe we can put a little spray in there and get them moving a little bit easier. Now, before I get too busy with that, the first thing I'm gonna do is take this baby and blow the cobwebs out of it. Okay, I've got the switchboard out of it. I'm just gonna give it a spritz here. Try to get down in there. Work these guys back and forth a few times. 
See if I can get it in the little gap right in the corner here. So I'm using the uh, Deoxit D5. Had very good luck with that. It's a very good cleaner and deoxidizer. So at the same time, I'm just gonna hit these uh, tone pots. Several people have commented they like my watch. Yes, I like my watch as well. Uh, Smart watch. You can see it without having to tap the backlight. It's a Garmin. Uh, seems to do pretty good. Shows my heart rate and battery charge, number of steps, number of floors climbed, uh, distance walked, and calories burned all at the same time on one screen. So it's very handy. Never have to touch it. But okay, got the switches all cleaned up. I wonder if we can get to the AC-DC switch, which I think is hiding on the back of the circuit board. I really do not want to have to unstring the dial cord in this thing. So I think we're just going to leave that be. I'll try to shoot it from the back side. And uh, one thing I did notice that the uh, uh, glass plastic is uh, loose. So I'm going to give it a spritz of hot glue. Try to hold it back in place for him as well so it doesn't fall in. Okay, so I've got my hot glue gun all warmed up here, ready to go. And so I'm just going to put a quick little bead down here. so it'll actually stick to the other side. There we go. So there's the bottom half. Push it down a little bit, let it cure. Shoot the top half real quick. Apply some pressure on it, let it dry. Or cool, as the case may be, since technically hot glue does not dry. While it's curing, I noticed that they grounded the speaker basket just by simply soldering a little lead on here. Didn't even bother to trim the excess off. Just soldered it to the little rivet they used there. Instead of going the extra distance and actually putting a ring terminal under one of the screws over here and then run it back through a uh, resistor uh, to chassis ground. And that just keeps uh, the static from developing on the basket of the speaker and, and discharging potentially to the voice coil or to the metal frame over here and causing a spark, especially on AM radio where uh, any static discharge is picked up by the antenna inside the radio and amplified. All right, so I've got it all back uh, working here. I've got the uh, switches back in, the pots all cleaned up. Just trying to see if we can get anything on AM. That is a 50,000 watt AM station that is about 200 miles from me and it's coming in pretty well. The alignment looks very close. It's supposed to be 810. Looks like it's coming in at 810. Let's go down here. I hear it faintly, but that is KFI Los Angeles. That's about 500 miles away from me. Of course, we do have some uh, late night propagation going on right now. After all, it is 11.42 p.m. So I would expect them to come in. Although, Los Angeles is actually in this direction from me. And the antenna is actually receiving from this direction, um, east and west right now. But the problem is, if I rotate this radio... Um, I get so much interference from some kind of switch mode power supply that I really can't get much. Just, I get like this constant hum. So I have to find the point where I can null that hum out. And that's unfortunately east-west. Anyhow, let's go ahead and put it back together. Just a real quick note, they are using a TDA 1220B as the uh, AM, FM, RF, IF process. And then down here there is a C1213C. That is the audio output amplifier. So just in case anyone needs it, here is the complete schematic diagram on this unit. Some of it's caught off page here. 
But uh, here is the main processor. Now it's, it references it at a KB4419A. And then over here is the audio amplifier, UPC1213C. I do believe that was a 1213C that we saw in the unit. But we definitely didn't have a 4419A as the uh, AM, FM, RF, IF chip. Okay, so there it is, back together. FM works great. Not really getting much in here with the uh, LED lights and everything. But it definitely is picking up some stations. All right. I think you're 68. But how old do I sound? Local station, 5,000 watts. Really? It's probably four miles away. A little bit of interference from the LED lights and whatnot. And all the switch mode power supplies plugged in. Well, unfortunately, the last couple of segments did not record, so I'll have to do this freestyle with a static image. I did go ahead and clean the AC-DC switch on the back of the radio once it was reassembled. It works great, the radio and the switch. If this video has helped you, please consider making a donation on my YouTube homepage with the PayPal donate button or at paypal.me slash norcal715. Remember, with your help, we can keep these things out of the landfill and out of the recycle bin. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. Everybody have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.